Hello, how are you doing? This is the one time of the year when I make a video not about books, but about films, because I watch quite a lot of movies as well, uh, especially in the past year, uh, uh, time at home, been watching a lot of older films and um, some newer films that were released on streaming services. And when cinemas reopened, I was right back out and watching um, some new movies. And the London Film Festival got to happen this year. So I got to see some great, like really brand new films that had just come out so I want to give my recommendations of the best ones that I've seen uh, this year and I would love to hear from you about some of the best things you've watched um, so you can give me some suggestions of things to watch. So uh, I'm on the, the app Letterboxd um, which is a social media app where you can just it's kind of like Goodreads um, for movies where you can just log what you've seen give it a star rating and you can also connect with friends um, to see what they've uh, seen so I mean this is an ad for that that app it's just uh, I find it really useful to keep track of of what I've seen and uh, I'll put a link to um, my profile down below um, if you want to use this app and connect with me there to see um, what I've been seeing and I'd be really curious to see what you've been seeing um, so uh, according to this app I've watched 289 films this year um, so yeah quite a lot but but I'm just gonna narrow down and give my favorites from this year and also in honor of making this video I'm wearing my t-shirt of uh, the film Waterloo Bridge, which is a 1940 film starring Vivian Lee. Um, so you can see her there. Uh, it's one of my favorite films of all time. I rewatched it this year and just fell in love with it again. Uh, I think she made it around like either immediately before, or immediately after filming Gone with the Wind. And um, it's a black and white film set during wartime. It's, it's a romance. It's the most heartbreaking, beautiful, romance. I've probably talked about it before because I love this movie so much um, and it's just such a, a tender moving film about uh, sort of like pride and and um, and and she gets caught up with in a romance with a soldier but then there's a misunderstanding and it's and it's it's tragic but it's beautiful and uh, yeah just uh, I just love it so yeah always highly recommend Waterloo Bridge uh, and uh, there was an edited version of it and there's also an earlier version of it as well um, but yeah um, recommend the 1940 version um, full uh, unedited version. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the first uh, newer film um, I want to recommend uh, that I just loved uh, is The Father, um, which is such a, a another like beautiful, heartbreaking film where Anthony Hopkins is suffering from progressive uh, dementia and uh, he won an Oscar for his performance in this like quite Justly, um, his, his performance is, is so good. And uh, the, the film is, I, I don't know if it was written as a play first, but I know the, the screenwriters of it um, are playwrights and it does feel like a play in a way because of how it's set around a single apartment um, which is constantly shifting and changing as his memories get increasingly confused and uh, but it unlike a lot of films that are made out of uh, theater scripts uh, it really works um, it's it's so powerful and moving visually how uh, it it represents his perspective um, as he's getting increasingly confused and people are sort of shifting around and changing and uh, and it's it's all very upsetting and emotional and uh, yeah just so so good I also watched for the first time the the film Mustang um, from 2015 and this is a Turkish film uh, about a group of sisters growing up under a very oppressive uh, patriarchal household and how they're getting married off to these men um, who they don't want to marry and uh, it's it's very distressing. Apparently this film was inspired by Sofia Coppola's film The, the Virgin Suicides um, and uh, yeah it's just it's it's so good and tense and uh, I really appreciate how yeah it, it represents their perspectives and they're the very different and conflicting perspectives in, uh, in a really uh, moving way um, but how they are really united as sisters. Valentina is a relatively recent film uh, from Brazil uh, about a trans girl uh, who moves with her mother uh, to the countryside and to a new school to try to evade um, the 
the bullying that she's been receiving and um, but then they meet new challenges there and it's uh, about uh, her tense relationship with her father and the the community and uh, her changing relationship with a, a group of friends that she meets and it's uh, such a, a beautiful and moving film and a really important story I, I think so I, I, I think this is an excellent really must-see movie. On a lighter note uh, there's an older uh, from 1969 uh, recording of Carol Channing and Pearl Bailey uh, giving a performance uh, on Broadway of a number of different songs and uh, acts and uh, it's it's uh, very silly and slapstick and funny uh, but just genuinely heartwarming because um, they're both such amazing performers they have a wonderful rapport with each other on the stage and with the audience and uh, yeah it's just it's a, just a really uplifting uh, performance to watch. Palm Springs is a recent film that's um, really fun a uh, sort of time shifting film and, and I love these like kind of time shifting films like this where um, it's it's a kind of a uh, in a sense like Groundhog Day where uh, two characters have to relive the same day over and over again. They don't know why they're caught in this loop and uh, and it's uh, so but it takes a really creative new angle on that like a number of films have sort of used this this concept and I, I really like how they play this out in a, in a way which is um, yeah really playful and fun and uh, yeah just just a pleasure to watch. Quo Vadas Aida uh, was also nominated for an Oscar this year and is one of the most powerful films I, I've seen uh, set in Bosnia um, when a UN translator is uh, trying to get her family out of this uh, camp when a uh, Serbian army moves in and takes over their their town and uh, and realize that um, their their lives are all in danger and it is such a heart-stopping um, desperate struggle um, as as it follows their their plight and uh, as moving around this camp and uh, and the the plight of all of the the people that are are trapped there um, it's it's so incredible another film that was nominated for a lot of Oscars uh, was Minari uh, about a Korean American family um, trying to uh, start a farm and uh, make a life for themselves and following uh, all the different characters and the the headstrong father as he really wants to make this work and the mother who's much more resistant and uh, and about the practical difficulties of, of this and uh, and the grandmother and this this such adorable little boy and yeah just following their their story there are lots of comic bits but uh, also lots of heartbreaking bits and uh, I just completely got swept into into this story an absolutely hilarious film from 1928 is is the cameraman uh, with Buster Keaton uh, when uh, he falls in love uh, with a woman working on the MGM lot and he wants to become a cameraman and following uh, his haphazard way of uh, trying to romance her and pursue this this job um, is uh, just so incredible like his physical comedy is is just amazing. I also loved The Sound of Metal uh, where a heavy metal drummer uh, loses his sense of hearing and uh, yeah, following his journey trying to adjust to that and integrate into a deaf community and uh, yeah it's um yeah, it's so powerfully done and like how it conveys that that sense and that process that he goes through um, is incredible. I think Riz Ahmed is incredible. I did sort of want him to win the, the Oscar but uh, but then I was very happy that Anthony Hopkins won it because I mean they're both such incredible very different performances uh, but but yeah this is such an amazing film um, even though I saw that Joyce Carol Oates really didn't like it on um, she tweeted about it but um, but yeah, I, I think it's an amazing film. I watched for the first time an old Jodie Foster film uh, from 1988 called The Accused, uh, where Jodie Foster plays uh, a woman um, that is gang raped in a bar, and um, and the the aftermath of that, and uh, the I this was so 
powerful. Um, it, the way the film is structured uh, to tell that story um, is so well done and um, really impactful. And uh, I think it's so incredible what, what this film does. Shiva Baby is a recent, um, absolutely hilarious uh, film about a young woman, a college student um, that goes to a Jewish wake. And uh, there she meets her sugar daddy or bumps into her sugar daddy. And the awkwardness of, of all of that and uh, and trying to navigate around her family um, is so well observed and absolutely hilarious and uh, yeah I just enjoyed this film so much. Amy Tan in Unintended Memoir. Uh, this documentary about uh, the life of the author Amy Tan um, is so impactful and, and moving. Um, I have to admit I've never read any of Amy Tan's books um, but I, I really should and, and I really want to after seeing this film about the story of her life and her very difficult relationship with her mother um, how it conveys that and, and talks about that and um, and her openness and uh, and method of, of sorting through her, her memories is, is so moving and yeah this documentary is just so beautifully done. Recently a newly restored version of the 1985 film Buddies uh, came out and this is about a uh, gay man living in New York City who's in a monogamous relationship and he volunteers to become a bedside companion or, or buddy um, to a man that is uh, suffering from uh, HIV and uh, as he's in the hospital and he's dying and um, and it follows their uh, friendship and, and relationship uh, the complexities of that and um, the, the the conflicts of points of view that they have um, but how they really learn from each other and connect with each other um, is so moving. Now if I had to pick one film as my absolute favorite from the year I, I think it would be Limbo uh, which is uh, about a group of refugees on a remote Scottish island um, waiting for their uh, asylum papers to be processed and, and a decision to made, be made about whether they can remain in the country or or if they're going to be deported again um, and, and in particular it follows a, a man from a Syrian family um, who is a talented musician and and uh, yeah, just follows him and a group of men that he's living with in, um, in this housing. And uh, the way the film is shown, um, there, there are some real comic elements to it, uh, but also tragic and heartbreaking elements to it, obviously, because of the, the subject matter. But um, the way it gets the balance is so well done and, um, and conveys uh, their very different points of view um, is, is, is so well done that, uh, yeah, this is an incredible, I think, like must-see film. I got to see in the, the cinema at the National Film Theater an older film um, called Sorcerer from 1977. Uh, which is about a group of men um, from different parts of the, the world um, who have all had to leave their homes for one reason or another and have ended up in this uh, section of Latin America where they take on this very dangerous job of transporting these uh, very this very volatile uh, liquid um, over very rough terrain and uh, it is it is terrifying um, and really gripping and uh, and I think apparently the conditions this were film this was filmed under were very dangerous as, as well in the making of the film um, was a really treacherous process um, so yeah this is a really uh, powerful film. A really excellent newer film I, I thought was uh, called Zola um, which is about a woman that is uh, works as a stripper and um, she befriends another woman who is a stripper who tells her about a job that she thinks that they should do together and uh, so they go on a road trip to Florida uh, but then things aren't as uh, she expected and it is uh, terrifying but uh, but also the way this film is told is is so playful and uh, really engaging and also it features the actor um, that plays I can't remember his name but he plays Greg in Succession and in this film he plays a very similar role um, but um, but very effectively and uh, so yeah I thought that this film was excellent. I rewatched the classic 1950 film uh, Sunset Boulevard and I could never get tired of, of watching this. It's uh, so well done. Um, if you've not seen it before I like definitely 
watch it. Uh, the, the story of a screenwriter uh, who's sort of down on his luck and gets sucked into this weird uh, enclosed world of a faded Hollywood uh, starlet um, who's now aging, um, but isn't actually all that old. Um, so, uh, so you know, what Hollywood considers to be over the hill um, is, I think, very different from what we normal people um, would. Um, but, but yeah, the, the way this tor story is told is so um, suspicious suspenseful and twisted and funny and uh, and and yeah I just I just love it like I said I also saw a number of movies at the London Film Festival um, new movies um, some of which haven't been released yet but I'd really encourage you to watch out for these in particular um, so there's a film called Playground uh, which is from Belgium and it uh, follows the story of um, two children that uh, go to a new school and uh, their their process of trying to fit in there and um, mostly told through the uh, younger sister's point of view um, as she sees her brother is being bullied and she tries to intervene in a way which doesn't really work and um, and uh, produces worse consequences and uh, yeah following their story and how it the film gets their point of view from the way that it is filmed and you just see from their perspective of almost like looking up at this world of adults and um and yeah the 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 pressure that they're under um is is you really feel it and uh it's so well done i don't often find films that are told from a child's point of view uh all that engaging but um but another film very much about childhood is a new french film uh called petite maman um about a girl um whose grandmother has died and so her parents are going to clean out uh her house and um while she's there she's exploring the house and the surrounding area and there meets another girl um who is actually her mother in child form and um yeah the way that it conveys this though um is so just like naturally done and um and it's very subtly moving um over the the course of the film um showing their relationship to each other and uh and what it says about their their points of view and it's such a beautiful film a new animated documentary which is probably another one of my like absolute top uh favorite new films that i watched this year is flea uh which is about a man who um uh, basically these um, two men have been friends for a really long time but only recently the documentary filmmaker he uh, learned about his friend's past his very harrowing past um, where his friend grew up in Afghanistan and had to flee with his family and their flight and uh, and so you get the story of um, his life and uh, his his passage into into Europe living in Europe and what happened to his family and his struggles um, as as a gay man um, who now is is on the brink of um, getting married to another man but um, but following his his story and his difficult um, the the process of them fleeing their home country and uh, but then uh, yeah also coming out to his family and it is it is so gorgeous and heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time um yeah this this film is just incredible a new film which really caught me off guard and which i wasn't really expecting much from is uh, the last duel uh with uh adam driver and matt damon and so you'd think this would be like a big huge success with um those two actors but um but actually this film did really badly at the box office and i think that's because it's really difficult to figure out who the audience for it would be. Um, it's s sort of set in these medieval times um, with knights and uh, and so I just sort of thought it would be this kind of historical epic film but actually it's the story of um, a, a woman's rape and the judicial process of trying to decide of uh, what um, the justice for that or or if there won't be justice for that, um, where these two men um, fight a duel with each other, and uh, and the way it's told um, through different progressing points of view, um, you get the same story through three different points of view, and and normally I'd be like quite suspicious of that, but but the way it's told um, is so insightful and really. Uh, it uh, sheds light on um, what the, the real story was um, 
about this um, about this attack and uh, yeah it's it's so well done so I'd really encourage you to watch it even if the subject matter and and style of the film doesn't appeal to you. I also watched an old Agnes Varda uh, documentary from 1981 called Murmurs where she um, the the French documentary filmmaker uh, traveled to Los Angeles and uh, recorded a number of different murals that she found there on uh, public spaces and walls and uh, and looked into the lives of some of the artists of these murals and uh, what it said about the community and the state of the country at that time uh, is, is so well observed. Another film I watched for the very first time is the 1992 film Deep Cover, uh, where Lawrence Fishburne plays a uh, cop that goes undercover to try to infiltrate um, this, uh, this drug gain and uh, following his story and uh, also uh, the, it uh, includes the actor Jeff Goldblum and uh, yeah, is, is really thrilling and uh, really well done. Now, I read Nella Larson's uh, classic novella Passing um, for the first time this year and uh, then watched the film um, version of it uh, uh, by Rebecca Hall, um, which is so well done, um, really skillfully told. I mean, the, the novella is really its own thing and has um, so much nuance to it, um, telling the story of uh, two friends or um, a difficult friendship of, of uh, where two black women, um, where one is passing for white and, and the, the other one is very much engaged in the black community she lives in. And um, yeah, and the, the story of their uh, relationship um, over over time, their friendship over um, time, and the the challenges of of that. I particularly liked how it gets the the ambiguity of the ending of what actually happened in this very dramatic final scene. Um, yeah, how it's it represents that on film, um, I think is really well done. And finally, uh, a very recent film, which I just watched um, the other night, uh, is called After Love, uh, which is about an English woman named Mary Hussein, uh, whose husband um, suddenly dies. Uh, and uh, sh she discovers um, that her husband was having a long-term affair with a French woman, and so goes to meet her and confront her, but um, then things don't go as expected. And uh, yeah, where this story goes um, is so tense and engaging and emotional. Um, the uh, the way it gets at the emotional stories of all the different characters, main characters in, involved, um, is so well done, and it's yeah really uniquely told. And uh, so yeah, I'd really recommend uh, this this newer film. Um, and then also just to say that uh, I really enjoyed uh, and was moved by um, a new TV series that was on Netflix uh, called Maid M A I D, um, which I think is based off from a, a novel. Um, so I'd be really curious to go watch that, um, read, watch, read that novel now. Uh, but yeah, following the, the story of, of um, a young, a mother who has a young child um, who leaves her husband um, who is um, subjecting her to, to psychological abuse, um, which um, gets an bordering on physical abuse, which gets very scary. And um, yeah, following her, her story um, over a number of episodes and uh, and what she has to go through in order to try to get independence um, is so harrowing and uh, really well told. So, um, so yeah, I loved watching that, that series. But uh, like I said, um, please let me know if you have any recommendations of, of films or uh, other um, TV series even that, that you would really recommend. Um, please let me know about that in the, the comments below. Um, or, or if you've also watched any of these, these films and, um, and if you have any thoughts about them, I'd, I'd really love to hear about them uh, as well. So, uh, so thank you for watching this and uh, I will speak to you again soon and I'll be talking about books next time. <laughs> okay, bye.